No shit. Hello again, folks. This is Barry with Barry's 8-Track and Classic Car Radio Repair, your favorite hippie nerd. And uh, this uh, episode, uh, we got something pretty exciting going on, which we always do around here. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to be showing off what hopefully will be my last building block towards having the uh, the world's absolute most state-of-the-art shop for uh, classic car radio and 8-track repair. Uh, what you see in front of me here is uh, two spectrum analyzers. I've got one for each side, one for each channel. And uh, this is uh, going to be uh, uh, enable me to adjust your head azimuth uh, quite a bit faster and probably a little bit better than I've been able to do in the past. Now, I do have uh, other spectrum analyzers that I've been using for a track head adjustment, and we'll see if we can get an overhead view of the shop here. And uh, here is a, there's one of my spectrum analyzers right there. I've got another one over here, and I've got one on the corner of the bench over there, and I've got two right here up uh, to my left. And uh, But these... Um, these ones that I've got now, uh, I can have a separate one for left and right channels. They're, they're virtually identical to look at. And the reason uh, that I have the spectrum analyzers is, well, first I'm going I'm to let you hear what these uh, waves are doing. Um, I, right now, I've got an audio sweep signal sent to these analyzers uh, going from lowest to highest human hearing frequencies. And we'll just let you hear this real quick, uh, just briefly, because it can be kind of aggravating. Again, as you can hear, these are uh, these are monitoring the audio sweep uh, from the highest down to the lowest frequencies, and they just keep sweeping back and forth. You can change the sweep rate, you know, make them sweep faster, things like that. Uh, but this is just to, uh, to demonstrate uh, how there are responding to different frequencies in the human hearing range. So I'm going to turn this down for the moment. Now the first thing uh, someone who knows a lot about audio is going to say is, hey, you've got these analyzers set for a linear sweep, but the human ear hears pitch in a logarithmic fashion, just like it does volume. That is quite correct. Uh, but in the real world of 8-track head adjustment, I'm really mainly concerned with the high frequencies because when I'm adjusting, uh, when I'm making meticulous adjustments to the azimuth, um, the base frequencies are not going to change at all. Uh, it's, they're going to be pretty much remaining the same. So by uh, having the uh, these uh, scopes in my sweep set to a linear sweep, it bunches the low frequencies way off to the left side, and it really expands the high frequencies to about three quarters of the entire display, making it much easier to distinguish between uh, things like hiss and noise uh, in comparison to the frequency that I'm trying to adjust the azimuth on. So uh, with that being stated, I'll give you another uh, little bit closer view of this um, of one of the analyzers and see what the waves doing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the sweep right about where the azimuth adjustment is normally done. Uh, most alignment tapes have the azimuth adjustment using a frequency of around 7 or 8K. That's a uh, kilohertz, 1,000 cycles per second. Right now we are at 8.176K, so we're a little bit uh, higher than we normally use, but you know, if, if I can make an adjustment with uh, with a higher frequency, that's even better, since uh, most 8-track players drop off around 12K, uh, with only a couple of the most high-end 8-track players going up to 15 or 16K. So 12K is really a, a, a realistic norm. Adjusting it to 8K is going to bring it out just fine. And uh, just to give you an idea of uh, how high 8K is, we'll just turn this up briefly. And as you can hear, that's a, that's a pretty high frequency. Uh, so we'll turn that back down because it's going to fatigue the ear really quick. And uh, the reason that I use a visual reference for this is uh, you might know uh, if you're buying uh, perfume for your wife or, or buying cologne for yourself and you're experimenting with different colognes at the store, um, after you smell about the first three or four, you really can't tell the difference anymore. Uh, you've got the smell on your body, in your nose, and in your brain, and it's really hard to tell the difference between um, especially uh, a, a perfume or cologne that has a more subtle aroma than ones that you've been previously sampling. So uh, using this technique here, um, it doesn't matter how fatigued my ears get, and I don't even have to hear what I'm doing. I can have the volume all the way down, not even be able to hear it, and still do a perfect azimuth adjustment. Uh, it's easy enough to do a height adjustment, you know, for minimum crosstalk. You just adjust it until it's loudest, and you don't hear any crosstalk between uh, between songs. Uh, when you're adjusting for azimuth using the higher frequencies, it can be quite a bit more tricky. Now, uh, I'm going to simulate... Um, first, we're going to start off, and we're going to reduce this input signal to where 
uh, let's say we have a bad head or the head is just terribly adjusted and we're not even seeing that 8k frequency uh, we can hear you know most of the stuff up to that which I'm not simulating at the moment on this but you know this more or less simulates that the head is either terribly out of adjustment or so worn that it can no longer be adjusted or, or we're not getting that AK signal at all to begin with so I'm going to simulate uh, using a, an alignment tape and uh, the 8K getting better. We'll just uh, let's for, say, for instance, that uh, I've started to get the 8K adjusted a little bit better, and now we can see that frequency climbing up a little bit. Okay, we'll see if we can adjust it a little bit better, and the wave gets higher. Uh, let's say that that's the best I can do, and I keep trying to adjust it. Well, okay, I'm going to adjust it. Uh, too far to the other side and that way it's going to go back down like that so I'll know I'm going in the wrong direction and I need to keep adjusting my head and I'll adjust it a little bit more towards the right uh, in the right direction and now we're seeing that eight uh, that 8k wave come up you know a little bit more so that's just a, a quick demonstration of uh, and there's an even better adjustment of the 8k frequency so that's just a quick uh, demonstration uh, a little bit of proof that I'm offering the general public that my shop is unquestionably the uh, the most state of art state of the art uh, repair shop in the world for repairing uh, eight tracks and classic car radios um, there's a just no other shop even needs this type of equipment they don't see the need for it and frankly there is no real need for it unless you're an obsessive an obsessive weirdo like myself uh, the mad scientist type um, in between jobs my hobby is my shop building up my shop uh, the best it can be and uh, building uh, step by step the uh, the most state-of-the-art repair shop uh, in the world for eight track uh, in classic car radio repair. So on that happy note, this is Barry with Barry's 8-Track Repair and uh, you can reach me directly for repair or conversion, not for free advice or uh, advice how to fix your unit. You can contact me directly at 928-533-9666. You can also visit my very informative website that's Barry's 8 com. B-A-R-R-Y-S number 8 trackrepair.com if uh, that's a little hard to remember uh, you can also visit my other site which is simply classiccarradiorepair.com and then the third website that I have is mainly just for my radio commercial so that the public can easily remember my website on the uh, on the first 30 second hearing and you're going to hear that right now thank you very much for watching and listening and we'll see you next time Have fun driving my classic ride got a Mustang buddy it's a 69 but she ain't Sounded so fine Driving this car, I can't hear the guitar And all my tapes run slow too Radio smoking, 8-track decks broken What can I do? Send it to 8-track Repair Center 8-track Repair Center 8-track Repair Center.com